Hello everybody, this is Etho, and welcome back guys to another episode of our Let's Play series. Uh, so guys, I was brainstorming ideas for our episode today, and I had a really interesting idea here. Uh, it occurred to me, we can make a color monitor in Minecraft. We could use shulker boxes as, as sort of pixels, right? Because you can place them in the world using dispensers, you can break them, and you can also dye them 16 different colors, so we could have a 16 colored monitor in Minecraft. I know, pretty cool. That was my first idea for today's episode, but then I had an even better idea. Uh, probably my best idea to date, actually. Um, I am, of course, talking about solar freaking roadways. What are they? They're solar. Freaking roadways. Seriously, though, their technology, they're going to replace, like, a whole bunch of stuff. Pyramid schemes, weight loss pills, Nigerian princess emails, and they have microprocessors inside. So they're, they're basically science. I've done the science for you, so you don't even have to think about it. Don't even question it. Now, if you're like me, people, you're worried about our environments. Do you see the green grass? Where has all the green grass gone in our world? Energy breeds pollution, I tell you. But not solar freaking roadways, because we're going to put at least some recycled glass in them. That's my word to you. They're going to be green. They're going to be greener than grass, people. At least 1% recycled glass, or 1% of 1%. There'll be some percentage in there, though, for sure. That's my word to you. And I know you're probably throwing your money at the monitor right now, but don't do not do that. You don't need to, because they pay for themselves. They produce energy and pay for themselves. So all I ask from you, a few hundred dollars each. That should get us going. In conclusion, I'm going to leave you with this, Okay. How amazing would it be? Are you tired of having to plug your horse in at night to charge, paying ridiculous energy bills every month? How amazing would it be if you could charge your horse while riding a solar freaking roadway? You can't do that. There's no proof they produce energy. But wouldn't that be amazing? Think of that hope as you invest in your future through me, through solar freaking roadways. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on. So, something I keep forgetting to show you guys is the new game rule that was added in the snapshots here for 1.11, the max entity cramming rule, which you can see happening at our Enderman farm. So basically, by default, they decide to make it so if you have 24 mobs crammed together, it will start causing suffocation damage. Uh, and since these guys only have half a heart, they basically just die automatically. Like, constantly. <laughs> so how does this affect my world, my mob farms? It's a uh, little bit of an annoying thing. I don't like it. But, like, the Enderman farm still works. I just have to, like, regularly kill those guys. Otherwise, they'll die on their own and I don't get XP from them. Um, something I read, though, is apparently it also affects players. So I wanted to try that out here. So if we go in there with them, it should cause suffocation damage. Oh. <laughs> we might not be able to go in there with them. Please bump me away. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't do it. Oh, darn. Yeah, let's try to ender pearl down here if we can. They really push you around, though. It's hard. Okay, there we go. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want out. Oh, darn it. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd be able to slice them and then get out, but I, it wasn't killing them for some reason. Mm-hmm. There was an opening there. Uh, I didn't kill him because I didn't let the sword charge. 
But I also couldn't, like, move out of there, either. Oh, man. Is my stuff here or not? Oh, yeah, it is there. Darn it! Uh... Okay. <laughs> I can't get my stuff! Gonna have to, like, get it this way, I think. I, like, can't go in there to pick up the items. It keeps pushing me. There we go. We're getting them. Alright, guys. So, kind of recovered here. I got my stuff back. Uh, I think that Enderman killed me because I looked at it, though. Not because of the new game rule. Uh, to test that, I would probably have to kill myself again, which I don't feel like doing. Uh, so, we've moved on to the Blaze Farm here. Because... I thought this might be one thing affected by the max entity cramming, and it definitely is. So, before I would hold a certain number of blazes here, this would have to get up to five lamps. Um, and that was exactly enough blazes to go from, like, level 27 to 30 to do an enchantment. And now it seems like they're gonna die before they get to the five, five lamps. Yeah, because we probably gotta keep, like, 30 or 40 in there to do it. Darn. <laughs> Don't know what to do about that. Kind of designed the whole system around that. And now Mojang have added a new game rule. So I either got to modify this or just wait and see what happens if they leave that on uh, by default. Which I don't want them to, but we'll see. So uh, I noticed something happened here today, guys, that doesn't happen very often in our world. Like, only once every few months, I would say. <laughs> uh, we're actually running low on potions. Uh, I checked this chest, and it's just about empty. Uh, so it's time to brew up another batch. Usually I just do this off camera. But uh, I, know I realize, like, even when we do the world tours, uh, we don't have enough time to see this running. So if any of you guys are new, you probably have no idea how this works. <laughs> so I thought I'd just do a little quick thing here to show you. Uh, we have like 40 brewing stands in this lab that all can run at the same time. So it's like an overpowered, crazy uh, potion brewing system. And that's why I very rarely have to turn it on. It has tons of storage, uh, but it's split into two systems. So over here, we have five brewing stands that brew up the awkward potions uh, when we flip up this lever. And then we have another lever over there that activates the rest of the brewing stands. Um, so up over here, we got a ladder. This is where I can refill the empty bottles. I guess we got some here already. Yeah, basically you just right click. Shoots the water bottles into a big hopper chain here. And those get funneled down into the system. Uh, has a big reservoir of water bottles that go into here. And then up above, I wonder where we could get up. I think you can get up over here, actually. There's a system for distributing those those uh, water bottles. Or the awkward potions after they're brewed. Um, where's the rail? Oh, here it comes. So yeah, this has, this has awkward potions inside. It kind of makes its way to each of these stations. And I found out a way to make it sit and wait until it's it's done unloading. All right, there we go. So this one's unloading. There was space for them there. So yeah, it does its job. And once it's out of stuff, it makes its way back, picks up more, and kind of fills up all the chests. OK. OK, they leave. And giant waiting time. Oh, man. I just realized I sucked at redstone when I built this. <laughs> it should let in a new batch right away. But I didn't know how to do that, apparently, at the time. Uh -huh. All right, so this potion lab also has a built-in netherwart farm, which is uh, mostly for decoration, but it's also very useful to have nearby. So you can get some nether wart, nice and easy, nice and close. Put that in there. Refill those. If any of these things run out of ingredients, it really messes things up. So i got to watch it carefully. Uh, these lights turn off if it runs out of awkward potions, I believe. Aha! Uh -huh. So over here is our main switch. Let's flip it. 
and that gets <laughs> that gets the game lagging very nicely. Uh, but it activates all these brewing stands over here for the the main brewing. Um, so all the awkward potions get converted into to their steps here. It does it in a chain. So for instant healing, for example, we have the the glycerin melon added first then the glowstone, then gunpowder. And at each step of the brewing process, you can access a uh, reservoir of potions here. Uh, instant health two without the gunpowder, without the glowstone over here, and just the awkward potions there. So it's a pretty cool little system. And I think I added something here too for sending potions to the nether, but I don't know if it really works. Let's try that out, I'm curious. So you could Let's go get some fire resistant potions. Those I think the only time I really use potions is in the nether actually. I I usually will use uh, fire resistance and uh, speed potions when I'm building something. Um, fire resistance just in case uh, I hit a pocket of lava and speed uh, allows you to build stuff a lot faster actually. It's something I highly recommend people do if they got a repetitive project such as building a tunnel. Oops. How does this work? Am I supposed to jump? I don't think it works. <laughs> I think I used to be able to jump and bump it, but that doesn't seem to work now. Uh huh. Anyways, let's move on here. Last episode, we or I showed you a, a new system I built here. I think we're gonna call it the Pixel. Seemed to be the the common thing, but it's a shulker box storage system. And I tried to explain it, as, but I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> so there was a bunch of questions about it that uh, maybe you could answer a few of them here. Okay, so I think one question that came up was, what happens if you put an item in that doesn't stack, like uh, armor or enchanted books or that sort of thing? I don't know if I actually tested that, so let's let's go ahead and give it a try here. Hopefully it doesn't wreck everything. <laughs> I think it'll be okay, though. What would probably mess it up is if you had something that stacked to 16, like ender pearls or eggs or that sort of thing. Probably mess up the item filter. Oh, wait. Um, let's search for gravel. You cannot search for items that, that don't stack, though. That's a limitation of the system. So I can't search for armor, for example. Okay, we got gravel. We searched for gravel. In here, it's still searching. Uh-oh. That was a long search. <laughs> I'm wondering if it did it twice. Uh, good question. No, I think it's just long because we had so many chalker boxes, right? Uh, it didn't seem to mess it up. Let's just double check there's no items on the ground anywhere. Yeah, I think we're okay. We did get the gravel we searched for, so I think that's not an issue. Actually, I should probably clarify. I think we can have ender pearls in our shulker boxes. We just can't do a search for them. Because if we do a search for them, it's going to put an ender pearl in the item filter. Like if we, if we have an ender pearl here and throw it in, because it stacks to 16, it'll mess up the item filter if it's allowed to enter it. Uh, but if it's just like an item in the chest we're not looking for, uh, it won't go into the item filter. So that's not a problem. Um, uh, the other question is, if we add more shulker boxes, does the search take longer? And yes, as we saw, it can take longer. <laughs> also, a big question was, what prevents it from going into an infinite loop? Because, like, this shulker box gets searched first, and then it can re-enter here before it's done going through all of, all of these other ones, right? Uh, no, there's actually a system here to prevent that. That redstone block there is a lock, and there's another one down there to hold the items into the chest over here, uh, and they alternate from each other. So basically, this is six chests tall over here, right? Six chests of shulker box storage. And then there's another six chests above that, so uh, double the storage above that. Or not double, but, you know, like copy. <laughs> I'm great at explaining things, aren't I? Um, there's an equal amount of storage above that as a reserve 
It waits until it finishes searching through all the shulker boxes, and then it allows them to re-enter this bottom half. Uh, we'll try to see that happening here. Um, but I've recorded this a few times and failed. So yeah, you see that? That redstone block is over there, so it's blocking this chest here. I think anything in here... Uh-oh. <laughs> Not that chest. Blocking some hopper. Oh, darn. Yeah, I'm great at explaining things. Part of the problem is I can't actually see anything. Wait a second. What does this redstone block do, guys? It locks this hopper, so it... Oh, so it prevents items from this chest going down, not this one. Uh, maybe we'll try that again. There's my steak. <laughs> Let's try it again. Also, the uh, question was, can I do a research? So can we search uh, stone blocks again? I added this button here to do that, but I think it's not working. I think we would have to activate it over here. Nope. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's gone. So I think that's searching for stone blocks again. We'll see. Mm, no. No, it didn't work. <laughs> Nothing showed up here. It, it was like an empty search. Wait a minute. Actually, it was in there. It just didn't shoot it from the dispenser. Okay, so it kind of worked. This thing has a bunch of flaws, though. I'm going to have to fix up. And I'm like picking up shulker boxes that are shooting out of it because that's still an issue right now. Uh, but my plan with the system, guys, after looking at your feedback and like after building one of these and seeing ways of improving it, kind of want to redesign it <laughs> and see if I can make it better. Because at the moment, it's like on the verge of being practical and good, but I don't know, it, it could be improved. Because, like, if we look through these shulker boxes just manually, uh, it's about the same speed as the system can run. There is a speed limit to it, which is the speed of hoppers. At the absolute fastest, you can search is two and a half shulker boxes a second, which we can manually do way faster than that. So that's kind of an issue. Um, it is pos possible to combine more than one search engine together. The problem with that, though, is once you take the boxes you've searched and re-enter them into the system, like let's say they have to go through the chest and hopper chain we have over there, again, you're limited by the speed of the hoppers. So if you have 10 items entering a hopper, you still got to wait for them to go through that hopper. Um, so there's this kind of limitations in Minecraft. Uh, other thing I would do different if I redesign this is get rid of these manual item elevators or these uh, the ones that rely on physics I would actually put in a dropper elevator here instead because you could do that much faster that would cut down on the startup and ending times of the search and another big thing you guys mentioned is we need to set up some sort of defragger so this is kind of like a hard drive um, in our example here we have a lot of chests with empty space in Let's let's take a look at these. Over here, we have only one third of the chest is full, right? Over here, this, we only got three stacks of items in here. There's a lot of wasted space, and that slows down the search time significantly. So if we wanted to make a good, practical, fast system, we would want some way of combining these shulker boxes together, the contents together. So we could easily fit these three into one, and that would make the search like three times faster for this case. Here, I tell you what, guys, we're going to actually try to design that together. We want to make a device to combine shulker boxes together somehow. Uh, sounds like a fun little project. So probably start off with a chest of shulker boxes, right, that are not, not totally full. There'll be some empty space in them, or they might be full. Um, and then we got to sort through them and try to combine their contents somehow. So, oh, <laughs> let's keep this locked for right now. So they'll kind of just wait in here until we unlock it. All right, and this is an empty shulker box, right? Yeah. Oh, there's the other one. I was like, man, I thought I brought 
five boxes. <laughs> okay, so these are probably going to go into a dispenser to place them in the world. And then we have to shift the contents from the semi-full boxes, or the full boxes, into the, the totally full boxes we're trying to fill up. Does that make sense? <laughs> so we're probably going to need another dispenser mechanism down here for placing an empty chalker box. So like this one over here. That'll place it in the world. And then we'll have our semi-full ones or full ones up here. Oh yeah, that's empty right now. The, the, that will get placed. And then we need to like shift the contents from the one above down below. Now if we just use a hopper, that'll work. But it'd be pretty slow. Okay, so the trick to getting around the slow nature of hoppers is to use hopper minecarts because you can combine a bunch of them together in like no space at all. Uh, the problem here though is I don't think you can place a track on a shulker box. No, you can't. So we can't just put it right above this. We're going to have to offset it like half a block. So we'll put a fence there. That way we can align it somehow. And then we can have like a piston here. Put our track here. And then we can combine as many hopper minecarts as we want here. The more we put, the faster it'll transfer the items between the two boxes. Yeah, that seems to be working. Good. Okay. And then we gotta like break the chest or the track. Yeah, there we go. That works. And then with the piston we can Hopefully, just push them over. Was that not a button? <laughs> I'm confused. I thought I placed the button down. I'm losing my mind. I thought I just made one button. Oh, piston translocation! <laughs> I love piston translocation, but it's really been, uh, it's getting me lately. Okay, I got those set up again. Let's try this again. I'm going to use a lever this time, though. So when we pull that, kind of offsets it half a block, and then we break the piston. So now any, you know, I shouldn't have placed it there, because it's going to pull items out of the dispenser too, not just the shulker box. Uh -huh. Oh, it's not even placing them in there. Ew. Why would that be? I'm not really sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, I moved it to the other side here, but it's still not doing what I want it to do. It's not placing the items in the shulker box here. And honestly, I'm not really sure why. <laughs> so we're going to try maybe a trap door instead of a fence gate. And let's try this one more time. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, let's just let's leave the one minecart there at least. Okay, so now if we put items in here, still don't go into the shulker box. Oh, because it can't open now, right? Let's break that. Still doesn't go in. Does it need to be on a rail? Even on a rail, it's not working. I'm so confused. This is won't won't put the items in. <laughs> so admittedly, my memory in this game is not the best, but I thought at one point you could transfer items from a hopper minecart into like a chest or something by putting it on top. Could be wrong on that. Could be wrong. It does work if you do it to a hopper though. Uh Problem is, we're, we're trying to do this to avoid the speed limit of a hopper, <laughs> so we may as well just use a, a normal hopper then. We can't really get around this, the slow nature of it then, unfortunately. So, wait, where did the... Uh, oh, I got it on me again. <laughs> okay, so basically, shulker box will get placed there. Contents will start draining down into here very slowly, and then... What do we need to do? I guess we got to detect when this empties. And when it empties, then we break it and change it out with another one from the queue here. 
right? Likewise, when this one is, is full, or when items stop transferring th into it, then we need to switch it out with a new empty shulker box, right? So we could do that by detecting if items are flowing through this hopper, maybe. So once there's no items flowing through here, then it switches this box with a new one. So this shut off now. So then this would break and it would maybe place a new one. Hmm. <laughs> this is actually a little bit of a complicated thing. We also need to know when we're done, like when there's no more boxes here. So we would need another detector here when there's no more items flowing through here, then we know we're done. Okay, so I might have uh, figured out one part of this anyway. <laughs> it's actually a little bit of a tricky puzzle. Uh, so let's do a little test run here. We'll put a couple items in here, a couple items in here, a few in there. So we're going to take these three boxes, we'll put them in the dispenser, and then it should automatically put them into our shulker box down here. So let's give it a try. So that turns this comparator on over here. And then when it runs out of items, it does that. So that put the shulker box into this hopper on the side here. These are all empty. Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah, so those items went down into the shulker box down here. Um, this is what the redstone looks like currently. Uh, so what we would, could do then is detect when this hopper goes from no items to items passing through, I suppose. So we put a block here and just run it to the dropper or the dispenser here, right? Oh, <laughs> I don't know why that scared me. I can't get used to that sound. That's a zombie villager. It just it's like the most scary sound in the game right now to me. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, we only need this to activate once. Alright, and then it does its own loop thing. So let's try this again. We got some boxes. Let's put them in the chest this time. Uh this is locked, I think. Okay, so when we unpower this, it should do it all on its own now. Nope. Oh, we need a delay here. A little bit of a delay. Okay. Because it activates the dispenser before the shulker boxes actually get to it, I think. Try it one more time. There we go. Place the first one. It's draining. Items are going into here. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's the problem. <laughs> Whenever you make something with redstone, you always got to think of what is the worst case? What could possibly break the thing you've made? And because this by default is off, if we put an empty shulker box in here, nothing changes. So this gets placed, and then that's it. It breaks it. Not really sure what to do about that. <laughs> so in our storage room, if we had any empty shulker boxes, it would break this this uh, thing. We would have to add something else for that. Also, I realized if we uh, just detect if items are flowing through here, that's not going to work either. I'm not sure how to tell when this box is full because it might be like we have three birch fences in and that doesn't count as a full stack, so it's not going to output a full, like, 15 length signal from here. A little bit of a tricky thing to uh, figure out, isn't it? If you guys have any ideas, let me know. I'm kind of out of ideas for today, though. Um, so I think we will wrap up our episode. All right, guys. So our comment of the day here, it says the main issue that this system may have, that's the pixel... Uh, search engine system we were just talking about is if there is a substantial amount of boxes in the system say 200 and the box that has the torches is at the topmost stack then it will take a long time to be sorted out and yeah that is definitely an issue with uh, the system and the reason why it might not be practical currently so with the thing we just made there the defragger 
uh, would help out a lot. It would speed things up a lot. But another idea would be to somehow introduce categories into our system. So for example, if we have 200 shulker boxes, if we could divide that into, let's say, 10 categories, like a stone block category that would have cobblestone, stone, stone bricks, you know, all that sort of thing, uh, then it would be 20 shulker boxes per category, maybe. And you could search through 20 shulker boxes pretty quickly. Um, so that would be another major way of increasing the speed and actually making it a practical system. To do that, I'm not really sure how. <laughs> That's another thing I've been thinking about, but hopefully we can figure it out. All right. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching as always, and until next time, take care, have a good day. Bye-bye.